Cops of Reddit, what's the creepiest thing you've found during a house search? Story 1. Possibly too late to the party, but here it goes. I was a fresh officer with dreams of being a hero. I get dispatched to a call of a family fight. Not wife-husband, but brother-sister. The female reported the male had attacked her. I arrived and located a female and male, the male I knew from prior contacts. I detained him in handcuffs and quickly smelled the strong odor of pepper spray. I found out that after the male knocked off the female's weave, she pepper sprayed him. I knew there were different types of pepper spray, like gel. I'm walking around the house taking photos for my investigation and assessing the property damage. I noticed that in his room, the odor from the pepper spray was extremely strong. It made my eyes instantly water with a decent amount of stinging sensation. The fumes made it incredibly hard to breathe and left me without the ability to breathe at points, requiring that I leave the room to get fresh air. I found a brownish gel substance all over the walls in the shape of handprints. I photographed it and determined that it was the pepper gel that the male suspect was wiping off of his face onto the wall. I found it odd that it was all over the walls and covered the room. I thought this chick dusted him with the entire can of pepper gel. After some investigation, I took the male to jail. I responded to the same house several days after for an unrelated medical issue. There were more family members at the house and the male was still in custody. I was having a conversation with the family as the hero firefighters were saving the day. I inquired if they had fully cleaned up the pepper spray from the male's room. They gave me a strange look and told me there was none in there. I told them about the gel that was on the wall. I then sat there in horror as they explained to me this man had been, for years, coming on his walls and playing with it. And the gel was in fact old cum and the fumes were the pungent smell of this man's cum room. My fucking god. Edit. I keep a running digital journal of shit I've seen on the job and located the sentry. Here's a photo from the room. Edit 2. I'd like to thank the random stranger for gold and all of you for the upvotes. It's nice to know that Reddit really only likes me because I was in another man's cum room for fun. Story 2. My brother is a cop. He told me about this time when they responded to a workplace accident where a rail yard worker had been crushed between two rail cars. The guy had been crushed and pressed into the ladder of one of the cars. They kept hearing voices coming from the body. Muffled voices, but definitely coming from the body. It took them a while to figure out the worker had been carrying a radio. Needless to say, they were a bit disturbed until they reached that conclusion. Story 3. Not a cop, but a former corrections officer. Doing a cell search one time and stumbled across a 500ml coffee mate container almost full of accumulated semen. I was later told it took 7 months to save it up. I've seen and dealt with a lot of shit, but for some reason, that one ranks up there. Looks like someone was really milking their time in prison. Story 4. My dad answered a domestic call at an apartment on the 23rd floor. As soon as he walked in, he saw blood everywhere. In pools on the floor, spatter on the walls and ceiling, smeared all over everything. He walked further in to find a woman crumpled on the floor, battered beyond recognition, and the partner is standing in front of an open window. My dad started to talk to the man to coax him into coming with, and the man immediately turned around and stepped out the window, falling 700 meters to his death. Edit. Yes, she survived. This reminds me of a story from the creepiest glitch in the Matrix thread, except the guy who was getting calls from the 23rd floor didn't find anything. Maybe you're in a parallel universe where there was something to find. Story 5. Tiny, quiet southern town. Whole family that had been dead for a week. Their teenage daughter's boyfriend who she met online was visiting from across the country. Stepdad, mother, daughter, and her friend all murdered and hacked up by an axe. The mom was a professor at my university a block away. And when she didn't show up to work for a few days, cops went to the house and talked to the murderer who gave them some plausible excuse, so they left. He stayed in the house for a full week before leaving. The cops went back when neighbors reported the smell. They caught the guy at the airport about to fly home. The fact that he stayed with the corpses for so long is what is really creepy about this whole thing. Story 6. I'm not a cop, but a paramedic. Went into the lady's house one time, can't remember what the call was for, that had sheets of paper taped all over the walls. They all said something along the lines of, Remember, the voices aren't real. Gave me a warm, safe feeling. I've written notes like that to myself. It does kind of give a warm, safe feeling. Until I remember I'm the one who wrote them. Story 7. Brother-in-law is a cop. He told me about a time he and his partner were called to do a wellness check on someone with a terminal illness. The family didn't know where he was. So they get to the house, knock, and get no response. They entered the house to see if he had passed away due to his illness. They did not find him there, but what they did find was a stairway leading down to a basement. In that basement was a vast number of sex toys, ropes, harnesses, etc. There was also a stage with a bed on it, and a video camera on a tripod focused on it, 
he had stumbled upon this guy's sex dungeon. The guy ended up being alive but was visiting someone out of town and didn't notify any of his family. <sighs> to be honest, I'm glad this one actually didn't end with a rotted corpse. Story 8 Family disturbance call on Christmas Eve 2011. Husband versus wife. No battery and nobody went to jail. But the house was filled with hundreds of knives and dildos. Normal dildos, little ones, great big horse dildos, and every kind of mall ninja knife you can imagine. Every horizontal surface was covered with sharp metal or jiggly silicone. There were even a few new ones under the tree. After clearing the house, we had to talk to these folks with a straight face for a good 10 minutes. It was one of the greatest challenges of my career. I'm now imagining two people going out separately to do Christmas shopping for each other. They spend hours agonizing over trying to come up with the perfect gift before sighing and going with a good old half dozen steak knives and a pair of rubber horse dicks. It could be a nice sweater or a tie. Or didn't she say something about wanting earrings last week? Maybe she was dropping a hint. But you can't chance it. I mean, you wouldn't want your other half to not get some dogs and stabbers and then be disappointed on Christmas, right? So there you are, with a new set of Ginsus and a 14-inch double-ended black one, just like last year. <laughs> Story 9. I was an MP and not involved in this particular case, but child pornography on a guy's computer. The guy was known to leave his room unlocked so people could use his computer. He ended up getting booted from the military and serving time in a military jail while swearing it wasn't him. Well, you have inspired me to not only lock my door, but lock and unplug my computer as well. Not that I have any of those in my computer. Anyways, story 10. Friend of a cop here. He told me about how him and his buddy went to search in an apartment. They looked around and his buddy finally called him over. The guy was just in an oven. Dead, of course, but in an oven. When the guys tried to pull him out of the oven, all the contents and gas of the dead guy fell right out. A few of the guys vomited and gagged. Story 11. My mother used to work for a police department, and I'd hang out there when I'd be homesick from school. This old man used to walk to the gas station in the corner to get a pack of smokes and coffee every day. The gas station attendant called for a wellness check when she realized she hadn't seen him for a couple of weeks in the dead of summer. Cops went, knocked, smelled something, opened the door, walked in, and instantly came back out vomiting from the smell. They had to come back later with respirators, trash bags, and snow shovels to clean up the sludge that used to be the old man. Another officer almost quit his first night on the job. A really bad accident. The guy shows up and the one car has no one in it at all. He's looking around. The guy isn't on the ground anywhere. He tried to figure out if maybe the guy walked away, so goes to look inside for some identification. Finds the guy. He crashed so hard that he slammed up under and into the dashboard. It was just a broken sack of bones stuffed in around the steering column and other parts. Holy f**k. That second one doesn't even sound possible. How fucking fast was he going? Story 12. My aunt is a police dispatcher. Normally she takes calls from the public and has an officer nearby respond. But one day she was asked to work the station's radio because the normal guy was sick. That meant she was acting as the central hub of the police radio network, taking calls from officers in the field and issuing backup to them, that kind of thing. She wound up having to listen to four cops talking back and forth in a panic as two squad cars arrived to check on a reported murder. The person who called was certain that there were multiple killers present. The victim's meat has been cut into one-inch cubes as if their killer was going to fry them up or make a bombs. The whole corpse had been disassembled like that. Bones cut into neat inch segments and organs removed, separated, and organized. She remembers one of the officers panicked and screamed something along the lines of, This is OCD movie monster bullshit. I can't remember the exact quote, sadly, and I doubt my aunt remembers it herself. She thought they were playing a joke on her until they called for a hazmat crew to get the body. That poor morgue guy that has to solve that puzzle. Can you even imagine putting that shit back together? Story 13. My uncle is a cop and likes to tell the story of the time he showed up to arrest a 15-year-old who skipped school to throw rocks through some cars and steal things in them. He gets there and knows the kid. They've gotten him a few times from the school with drugs, one time for having a knife. They knock on the door and his 18-year-old brother and 17-year-old sister open it. Cops say what they want and they tell them to fuck off. Cops show they have the warrant for the kid's arrest and that they have to open the door. Gets told another time, and now the other cop car pulls up and asks what's going on. Uncle said they might have to force their way in and break the chain. 18-year-old shithead says he's got a gun. About three seconds later, the door is broken, the 18-year-old shithead is tased. And 17-year-old screaming for the brother who wanted to book it. He jumps out the window and gets away. For now. Brother is thrown in a cop car, 17-year-old slaps the one officer, and gets the same free ride and bracelets. They call the property manager and get the permission to enter the house completely to investigate. 
The second floor reeks. The worst smell they've ever smelled. They get upstairs and it just gets worse and worse. They open the door and find a long rotten body surrounded by needles and other drug shit. They leave and call it in. Uncle said later it came out that the grandmother died of an overdose, the mother was in jail for stabbing a UPS guy, and the kids never reported the grandmother was dead so they could keep cashing her social security checks. She was dead for about a year. Other than that, his best creepy stories were of a guy who tortures and kills animals by feeding them to other animals. Not a mouse to a snake, think more cat to a dog, or way too large rabbit to a starved snapping turtle. He also nailed several live rodents and cats to a board in the basement where he'd photograph them. And the other is a drug dealer who killed a guy and tried to put him through a meat grinder and feed his pit bull. You know what's sick, and I think about sometimes, is that there's stuff going on now like this that hasn't been discovered yet. I wonder what effed up things people are doing within their homes. Story 14 I volunteer with local PD and I go on ride-alongs often. My creepy thing isn't scary so much as freaky, so we get a call about some squatters in a house that's going to be demolished soon to make room for a freeway. No big deal. Kick them out and go on with our business. It's sunset, just starting to get dark. Our car and the other officer arrive at this place and it's all fenced off and looks abandoned. And by abandoned, I mean it looks scary as hell. It was like an old school house, metal swing set, and a friendly scarecrow next to a fence. Some crosses here and there, but it was in a residential neighborhood. On the blocked in windows, people wrote in Sharpie all kinds of spooky stuff. This place belongs to us, and just all around weird shit. Like even creepier than that. So there was a main house, a garage type thing, and then a cellar. A fucking door leading underground with creaky ass wooden steps. And so if you walk down those, it's concrete and there are windows. But it's a basement. The windows just show dirt. They're beds and stuff, but it looks like it's been abandoned for a long time. It was so scary, it's ridiculous. If this comet gains any traction, I'll drive over and take pictures of it. I know it's still up. Edit. I'll go snap some pictures today after class. It should be up around 2pm California time. Update. I went and checked it out. I guess they demolished it because it was a haven for squatters and homeless people, and some people still live in the surrounding houses. I don't know why they demolished it because I was there with my girlfriend maybe two, three months ago, and I figured it would still be up. Sorry guys. I did, however, get some pictures of the demolished land, a screenshot from Google Maps that gives me a little proof. This was my first chance to deliver as OP and I disappointed you all. Story 15. Trooper here. Responded to a fight between two brothers and another unrelated black male. All these guys were in their late 30s or early 40s. Get them separated. They were all drunk. Turns out the bigger of the two brothers and the other male were fighting over who got to have sex with the other brother. They had been raping him for a while. All three were low functioning. Not really creepy, but I'll always remember that one. Nope, I would definitely classify that as creepy. Story 16. Creepiest. A dead guy. But not just your average dead guy. This guy died on his couch surrounded by no less than 1,500 Miller Lite cans. Plus, he had no friends or family. None. He was retired and his electric bill was auto-deducted from his checking account. He died, on his couch, and no one realized it for five months. When we found him, the top, front really, because he was on his back, was completely skeletonized. But the bottom, or back against the couch, was still meaty and rotting. The half-skeleton was kinda creepy, but it's really creepy and sad that this guy left this world and it didn't affect anyone. Just gone and forgotten. Funniest. Respond to a burglary, going through the house with the homeowners, a young married couple, documenting damage and loss. Step into the bathroom. There's a red vibrator on the floor. They look at it, I look at it, and then we look at each other. Spend the next five minutes with locked eye contact talking about the broken window, missing jewelry, missing TV, etc. Everyone refusing to look at, discuss, or acknowledge the vibrator. And then on to the living room. Oh, there was also the dead fat lady with a pug that started eating her asshole. Yeah, it's pretty easy to miss a dead fat lady with a chewed up asshole. Story 17. Taking this law class, my professor brings in a cop to talk about points of law. At one point, the cop shows the class a picture of a man who committed suicide by gun. Can you see what color his eyes are? He asked. Of course no one can, and after some dumb stares, the cop says, Blue. One blue this way, the other blue that way. The whole class groans and I raised my hand. Obviously, you have thicker skin about this sort of thing than we do. Have you ever seen anything that got to you? The cop got serious looking and then told us this story. A local family, two brothers, both young. Every Saturday morning, the older brother would get up early and make toast, and both he and his younger brother would sit in front of the TV, munch some toast, and watch Saturday morning cartoons. This one Saturday, the older brother didn't want to get up and make toast, so the younger brother decided to try it himself. 
He apparently went into the kitchen, put the bread in, and pulled the switch down. He didn't notice how close the toaster was to the kitchen window curtains. To make a long story short, the house got fire and the parents barely made it out alive with the oldest son. By the time the police officer arrived, the younger boy was dead, burned to death in the living room. The officer said he must have set the toaster and went into the living room to watch TV and wait for his older brother to wake up and join him. The officer said the window nearby had collapsed from the heat and melted around the little boy. The cop said he had two boys about their age at that time, said he had to excuse himself from the scene, went to his squad car and couldn't stop crying and shaking. As the cop told the story in class, he started crying again. Story 18. This one wasn't mine but from an EMT friend. It's also maybe not so much creepy as nasty, but it makes my hair stand on end whenever I think about it. In one of the apartments in a nearby city, the apartment manager went in to investigate a really bad smell in one of the lower units. Apparently people all around it were complaining. Once he saw what was up, he called the ambulance. So first responders show up, which includes said EMT friend, and there's this lady sitting on the couch. There's also something squirmy going on down below her underpants area. So they check her out, and in the process removed said undergarments, out falls a swarm of maggots. Yes, her lady bits were covered in them. Apparently said individual had a fairly strong substance abuse problem. Some of the needles she poked into her nethers, which caused an infection. This led to rotting flesh which attracted flies, which in turn led to maggots. The worst part? She was not dead. Just so drugged up that she basically never noticed that she was literally rotting and falling apart from the waist down. Uh. Story 20 I spent my first year as a constable in an inner city suburb of Queensland. Now, of the population of this area, something like 40% was reserved for government commissioned housing for rehabilitated criminals and persons released from mental health assessment centers. So here was a share of creepy shit, but to be fair for the most part, the people we dealt with were more like cartoon characters than super shady creeps, but they had their moments. One guy that we had met before just decided one afternoon to start destroying shit in the commission set of units he lived at. He was going fucking off, kicking through latticing, throwing pot plants off of buildings at passers-by, stealing and collecting people's shoes, and smashing car windows. After about 15 minutes of mayhem, he must have ran out of steam and gone back to his unit. That's where we found him and he decided to bung on the turn. He just would not stop screaming and bashing his head and face into any surface or object he could find. Eventually we got a van with a pod and secured him. Then we went back into his house to figure out what the fuck had happened. The house is a cluster f Somehow he had fit two Coles trolleys inside and was using them as furniture. The whole place smelt of rotting food and shit. On the coffee table, if you can call it that, or a series of scrawled notes of just expletives, again not massive mental function with this guy, and a wooden box. Inside the wooden box were about 100 small clip seal bags, over half the bags had a brown granular organic matter in them, the others had clear crystal-like stuff in them. The brown bags were somewhat organized from smallest to largest staples. Now with the type of people we had in the area, we had all sorts of wonderful ways these people got high. We were used to seeing weird shit that people would ingest. So we don't recognize these bags, but we've got a pretty good idea it's a narcotic of some kind. So of course we examine these bags and their contents. There is enough there to test if need be, so I get one of these bags and empty the contents to see it better. So these samples of brown material. They've got flecks of color and little tendril-like hairs, not unusual for a plant derivative to have, but I've never seen it before. So I'm looking at it as I hold talking to my partner that it might be really coarse hash derivative or a byproduct of the production of something else. Cat, maybe. Might explain why this guy went nuts. A dog unit officer who assisted with the arrest comes in. He sees the scene, looks at the coffee table looks, looks at the bags, and looks at me holding the contents of one in the palm of my hand, and straight away says, The guy got golden staff. He's been collecting scabs. This guy had been picking at a golden staff infection on his leg, collecting the scabs, organizing them into smallest to largest, then eating them. The small yellow crystals? Snot and crust from his nose. Same end goal. The shit was f***. I bought shares and personal hand sanitizer after that. Story 21. Not a cop, but my brother is an EMT that told me these two stories. Cops got called because some children were wandering around in the yard of a house in the evening. Neighbors had never seen those children, and there were no parents or other people. No lights on in the house or any signs of somebody being home. The children weren't wearing any clothes. They approached the kids. The children are 6 to 10 years old. But talk in an indistinguishable language or basically gibberish. Cops call for backup in an ambulance because this gets freaky. They take care of the kids outside. Nobody knows what the kids are saying. They're very pale like they've never been out in the sun. Cops enter the house. No electricity. It's dark so they use their flashlights. House seems to be used yet is cluttered and not well taken care of. 
They look around and find a crib with something laying in it. No sound. No movement. Shit. One of the cops goes outside, can't handle it. Other officers walk in. Relief. It's just a doll. Real bad case of neglect. Parents apparently left for the day and forgot to lock up the kids. Another story. Cops got called to a house. They enter and look around. They walk around the house and check the cellar. They find rooms with doors similar to prison cells. Kids inside. They can talk but can't see. Because there was no light in their cells. Their eyes didn't develop properly. Because my brother is an EMT, he doesn't know the end of the story, but this freaked everybody out. Story 22. Not a cop, but a former officer of the law told me this years ago. I will let you decide if he's full of shit or not. The officer had responded to a parent's call to arrest their son, whom they were convinced had relapsed on meth. What had tipped him off was when the son had started blasting both trash metal and porn on max volume from his bedroom and locked himself in. Communication with the kid was impossible with the noise. However, the officer's partner had been able to glance into the kid's window and could see that he was sitting motionless in front of his computer. He was shirtless, but otherwise, everything seemed rather normal. With permission from the parents, the officers decide to push through the lock. Moans and groans and relentless guitar are deaf in the ears. The only light illuminating the room was the bluish hue of the computer monitor. The kid's face was a distorted grin, stretching to his lips' furthest limits. He wasn't shirtless. He was in fact naked and drenched in sweat. And in his right hand, cupped like a chalice, were his testicles. Which he had ripped off in a flurry of drug-induced self-mutilation. Wow. That fucking hurt to read. Story 23. Had a buddy I worked with as a retired officer. He was driving past and saw a multi-car rollover on the interstate. So he calls the ambulance and starts to look for people who got ejected from the cars. Found all the passengers except for one. Most of the people died, by the way. Finally, the ambulance and a fire truck come and he's trying to find the last person. Turns out it was a little girl and she was face down in the asphalt, but still moving weakly. Who went to go get her when the fire truck ran over her head? Scarred him for life, he said. Story 24. And my grandparents on vacation in Iowa. They lived in the middle of nowhere, with a couple of elderly neighbors in cornfields for miles. It was like 2am and I was going to go have a smoke before bed. Their back porch had a big sliding door. Well, I walk into the room with a sliding door and there's a guy in a creepy mask like this. And his eyes are jet black. He's quietly wiggling the door, trying to open it. The lock is weird and lets the door have like an inch of free play. I got so scared I felt my butthole clench up, and I dropped my sick. Right then the guy freezes and looks right at me. He pauses, then starts frantically shaking the door, trying to open it. Like this dude is trying to rip the door off the fucking house. I run over to my grandpa's gun cabinet and grab something. I didn't know what it was, some old gun. And by the time I whipped around to point it at him, he was gone. I ran and woke up my grandparents. We all walked around the house with loaded guns for a minute, but the guy was gone. A couple of weeks later, some bald guy walked out of the cornfield wearing a dress. He stood by the highway for half an hour, then got picked up by some sketchy car. I won't even go in cornfields in broad daylight anymore. Story 25. Friend is a cop. Wellness check called in. Went in, smelled horrible, and discovered a large dead guy, shirtless, sitting in his front room, in a lawn chair watching TV. He had set up an industrial space heater behind his chair, which was on at full blast. Due to the heat, and apparently other factors, he had merged through the back of that lawn chair. Story 26. We went to an apartment which was a local drug den. A female we knew called and said the male renter had been assaulted and she had run. We got there and the door was bolted shut. I kicked the door over and over again and it wouldn't open. What I found later is the dope team had done a search warrant on the apartment a couple of weeks earlier and afterward the tenants had reinforced the door jam with a metal plate. It took me a total of 22 times kicking the door before I broke the deadbolt in half which flew across the room and hit the wall. We made entry, guns drawn, and started clearing the apartment. This place was the kind of spooky I've only seen in places where a lot of meth is done. It was dark, there were swastikas, 666, upside down pentagrams, etc. painted on the wall. Pictures of faces hung on the wall with the eyes X'd out and baby dolls with their eyes scratched out into X's. As we cleared the first room, we started seeing the blood. First on the bed, then a trail on the floor leading into the back room. The layout was weird. One main room, then a back room which is more of a hallway, and a bathroom at the end of that hall. We followed the trail of blood down the hall to the bathroom door. In front of the door was the renter's dog which was shaking uncontrollably and pissing all over the floor, scared out of its mind. As we got closer, the dog got really aggressive because it was scared. Made my way around the dog and entered the bathroom where I found the renter hunched over in the shower, bleeding from his face, holding his cheeks with his hands. He was frantically trying to talk, pleading with us not to hurt his dog. Blood was dripping from his mouth and I couldn't understand him. Then I saw the extent of what happened to him. His jaw had been dislocated on both sides when he was beaten by two men with a hammer and it was just hanging there, 
As he was trying to plead with us, he could only attempt to talk by flicking his blood-covered tongue in pattern of the words, because his jaw didn't work at all. Seriously, what the f- Story 27 Not a cop, but a fire investigator. We were working a scene where two kids had died after a space heater caught on fire, the dad was playing poker down the street, and the mom was with some other man down the street. The fire department came in and cleaned out the scene, and we came in after. As we were sitting through the ashes to find components for the space heater, we found the two-year-old foot. Mind you, this was after dark so we could barely see and we were using flashlights. It was a bit creepy. Story 28 One time a dude has three years worth of videos he took of boys and men of all ages using the public library bathroom. He said it was common for guys to go in there and jack off. I had no idea. He said most people had no idea they were being recorded. Others knew, but just didn't care. He also had two external hard drives full of every kind of twisted porn imaginable. Again, involving all ages. This is more bizarre than anything else in your post. I've heard of voyeur fetishes before, and everyone on the internet knows about the extremophiles who search for shock videos to get a thrill. But the idea of somebody whacking it in the library bathroom and not caring that some perv is filming them is fucking weird. Story 29. Funny and irrelevant story. My cousin is a cop and a little on the short size. Minimum requirements for a New Zealand police officer. During a search of a house, he was using a 20 liter paint container to stand on to assist in searching higher areas of the house i.e. closets and such. At the completion of the search and after three hours they had found f**k all. My cousin then looked in the paint container he was using the whole time to stand on, thinking it would be just paint, but instead it was full of weed. About 20 kilograms of quality grade Coromanda gold. Laughter ensued. Edit. This story was told to me by my police officer cousin, so let's assume some exaggeration of the weight of the weed occurred during the retelling. I don't smoke it, so I don't know. It was a big bucket. Don't miss the point of the story. Edit 2. Yes, thanks to all those that pointed out that NZ police has no height restrictions. They have no height restrictions anymore. They used to, years ago when my cousin and I applied. He's 5'6 and at the time that was borderline. Story 30. This one is from an MP friend of mine, so take it with a grain of salt. My buddy was a duty officer one night and as such, he had to respond to serious events. One night there was a fire alarm and he and a bunch of MPs rolled on it. This was a real fire. False alarms are pretty common. The source turned out to be an officer's apartment. When the investigation was conducted, it was found that the officer had filled a bathtub with fuel and field manuals, and decided to suicide by sitting in the tub and igniting the fuel. After a few seconds, he decided that this was a bad idea and ran from the tub to his apartment door before the death finally took him. So the responding MPs found his charred remains and the bits of burning flesh that were falling off him as he ran for the door. That seems like a terrible way to commit suicide. Surely he had access to a gun. What would you want to burn to death? Story 31. Less creepy but more of a surprise. Get a call for a burglary. I'm doing a walkthrough with the resident noting all missing and damaged property. He was an older guy. We were in the bedroom looking in drawers. I open one and see it full of women's panties and bras. I ask him when his wife will be home to help identify missing items. He stutters a little bit and finally says, Uh, those are mine. I just closed the drawer and went on with my investigation. We are all a little weird, bro. Far be it for me to judge you for wearing pretty underwear. Story 32. Not a cop, but I worked alongside adult protective services and sometimes cops. The place smelled absolutely dreadful. The elderly lady was dead sitting upright on the couch. She had shot herself a watery one at that time of death, apparently. That's not the only thing that smelled bad. There were buckets of shit. Literally dozens of bucks filled with fecal matter in every room of the house. One of the cops didn't have a face mask, and he almost puked every time he coughed or sneezed because of all the dust and the putrid smell. Apparently, the elderly lady lived in the home with a few of her brothers. Some homeless people that were squatting in the backyard were the ones that called the police because they saw the brothers leave, but hadn't seen the lady in days. The smell coming from the house also raised some red flags. Story 33. Former LEO with two stories. Got dispatched to a call. Daughter has tried to reach her elderly mom and can't make contact. These usually end badly. Made location at the house and received written authorization from daughter to make forced entry at the front door. Asked the daughter to wait by the squad car and had the fire department spread the door frame open. Immediately noticed the smell and began to search the house. Found the mom in the kitchen laying in the open door of the oven. Half of her face and hair were burnt off and the oven was still cooking her. Apparently we found out from the daughter the mother used the oven for heat and had a heart attack and fell on the oven door. Best thing I can say, it looked like Harvey Dent from the Nolan Batman film. The second story got a call from dispatch about a woman screaming from an abandoned apartment saying she was being tortured or killed. The partner, four other officers, and I had to search every room and door in what looked like a college dorm. 
All the doors faced inwards, and there was absolutely no way of knowing where the screaming was coming from. Partner found the woman covered in her own blood running out of an apartment. I held the apartment door while he ran her down. Scariest call of my life. Turns out she was tripping on PCP and had been cutting herself. There was no way of knowing that until we searched the apartment. I swear the Michael Myers, Kruger, or Chucky was sitting waiting behind every door in that apartment, waiting to stab me. Awesome time. Story 34. Some guys were four-wheeling at a local lake in an old topless Ford Bronco with no windshield. It rolled and threw everyone out but the driver. It was remote and took us a while to get there. When I arrived, everyone that could move was kneeling against the Bronco. When I walked up to it, I could hear screams coming from underneath. It was agonizing, those screams. I shined my flashlight underneath and I could see the guy's face. His head was so deformed from the weight of the vehicle and he was still alive, just screaming. Fire department was still a few minutes out and we didn't have anything to lift it off him. The kneeling people were apparently trying to lift it off. Then they reverted to digging. It was horrible. Such a helpless feeling for what seemed like an eternity. The screaming eventually became low moans that eventually stopped. The guy passed away before we could get him out. This was my first year as a police officer. Later that night, early morning, I had to go tell his wife about his passing. Death notification. It was really hard not to break down crying with her. She wanted to know more details, and all I could think of was the screaming. I'm not sure she ever learned the horrible details we encountered that night, but I didn't tell her. Those screams woke me up many nights for years after. Eventually, they get replaced with new human tragedies. Story 35. Not me, but a friend. He and his partner were at the time working in a smallish town, so most calls were regarding suicides or elderly people. This day, they checked up on an apartment of an elderly, which they presume is dead due to the horrible smell. In cases like this, they would take turns in who would be the one going in to check on things. This time, it was my friend's partner. Five minutes after going in, he comes out with a shocked look on his face, completely wet and covered in all kinds of nasty fluids. When he went in, it had been completely dark, so he probed around trying to find the light. Suddenly, he slips into a pool of something, and when he landed, he knew the worst had happened. He slipped in the fluids of a corpse and landed in it, so to say, getting submerged in a completely rotting human corpse. Bad day at work, I'd say. Story 36 Australian here, worked remotely enough for some good stories. Late at night, called to a drunken dispute where a firearm had been discharged. Attended with four or five of us, the whole patrol group. Found the gun, which was all good. My partner went to unload it and realized it had no trigger. He went to touch the safety and paused. We both had a closer look and then asked the owners. Apparently, the safety was the trigger. Anyways, no one was licensed, so we searched the house for extra ammo or other weapons. No one is really supposed to have guns here unless you have a good reason. Don't know why I did it. It was a dumb idea given the state of the house and the area. Dog poop on the floor and stuff, and nappies everywhere. I opened the fridge, staring face to face with a kangaroo with its paws out looking at me. That was the top shelf. I looked down one shelf and there was the other half of the kangaroo, tail hanging down off the middle shelf. The smell. Oh dear, the smell. The light was on. Not sure the fridge actually worked though. Closed the door pretty fast. Of course, the most reasonable thing to do was move to another part of the room and yell at my partner to check the fridge. Not really creepy, just unusual. I was newish at the time. Story 37. A friend was a cop and I'll never forget the sex dragon story she told. She was responding to a domestic with her training partner. This was her third month in the job. Parents had called the cops and their son. The police found a stuffed toy dragon in the son's room with a hole cut in it, filled with old semen. But the toy dragon was the tip of the iceberg. It turns out the 14-year-old son had been his 8-year-old sister, 11-year-old brother, and 5-year-old male dog for the last two years. The son gave absolutely zero fucks that he was hurting other people. He just wanted to get off. Story 38. I'm no longer a cop, but it wasn't because of this scene that I left the profession. Got a call from a wife that her husband had died or committed suicide in their backyard shed. I was the first on the scene and she directed me toward the backyard and told me that the door to the shed was around on the side. I walked around to the side of the building and saw a guy in full French maid attire hanging by the neck. The garage ended up being a super kinky sex dungeon filled with leather whips, dildo machines, weird pics in the walls, and buckets of liquid. The best part was that the whole place was wired for video and sound. It ended up being a case of autoerotic asphyxiation gone wrong, and his wife was mortified that the whole sex dungeon thing had gone out. Story 39 We got sent to a well-being check for an old lady that lived by herself in a rough section of the city. This was a few years back, but if I remember correctly, she had no family or friends. Some sort of wellness aide called it in. No one had heard from her in a few days. We knock and knock, announce ourselves, but nothing. We get a property manager on the phone. He comes by with a key. We open the door and there she is, very dead on the floor. A look of fear or pain frozen on her face. 
One of her feet was detached in about a meter, I'm using metric to avoid bad puns, away from her body and blood everywhere. I instantly assumed she was murdered and got a shot of adrenaline. But then we take a second and take in the whole scene. This is how the woman died. She needed to adjust her blinds so she got a chair from the kitchen. Stood up on the chair, lost her balance, fell, and landed on her foot which snapped clean off her leg. She then proceeded to crawl around bleeding until she passed out and died. I've seen much worse, but that one sticks with me because I can't even imagine the thoughts running through her head as she was dying. All alone and unable to summon help. Story 40. My dad was a state cop. Yeah, yeah, shut up, it counts. He responded to a call in a rural area once. The couple involved were known repeat domestic violence or battery offenders. This time, the lady apparently had had enough, and either shot the guy in self-defense or shot him point blank. When my dad entered the trailer, he told me he could see a trail of dark muck on the floor. Some spots were more splattered, thicker than others, but it was clearly a trail as if something had been dragged. My dad and his partner followed the slick through the front room, where the man had been shot. He crept down the hallway and into the kitchen where they saw the man himself. He had dragged himself, bleeding from the chest or stomach, through his house trying to reach a phone. He made it into the kitchen where he managed to hook his chin onto a table. So his chin was still on the tabletop and his body kind of drooped under him with his legs kicked out behind him. Story 41 My dad is part of CSI and tells me odd stories every day as he comes home. A heavily obese hoarder was living in her apartment. Everything filled head to toe with rotting food, wrappers, and piss. She held the common decency to use her shit-covered toilet and did so. But on that particular day, it wasn't just the good old number two. It was also a baby that had been rotting inside of her for months. The poor creature fell out of her in chunks, and its limbs just kind of exploded all around the toilet. A nice baby soup that had to be fished out of a toilet by two officers and seemed to have shaken them up for a day. And I'm done.